And thank you very much for the introduction. I, um, I just uh, moved to ASU this January, and uh, I've been accused of giving the same talk. So I'm going to give the same talk again. But except that uh, Michael now wrote the title. But the only difference today is going to give the same talk more or less twice, because I had to speak at 1 o'clock. And I, I actually, I don't think I have ever done that before, but uh, uh, I'm going to do that today. Uh, let me start with some, some quotes about uh, uh, President Scrooge, which is the new ASU president. Well, not so new now. He's been here for two years. And essentially, he makes some very interesting points. So he talks about uh, what means uh, mathematical uh, diversification. And he says that it's not just numbers. I think we'll agree with that. And then uh, he goes on to point out that university culture is in itself. Uh, it remains elitist, exclusive, incomplete, has a lot to change. In other words, we are, the, um, we are uh, part of the uh, status quo. And that's part of the problem. And yes, we are moving very slow. And the key thing is what, w what we have to do to change this. Uh, I took a few other quotes. And uh, the, I think one of the key issues that we have to address has to do uh, how to welcome everybody into the system. And I think that's sort of the most critical component. I, uh, I think that overall, almost every, every place one goes, there is uh, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly a large set of really extraordinary faculty, supported faculty. But there is this not connection, uh, there's this big cultural differences. And, um, and, and in fact, sometimes they're so intense that it really prevents uh, either group, right? from establishing connections with each other. OK, uh, so anyway, and, and the general issue is that this, is, uh, this problem is not a one discipline, but it's of multiple uh, disciplines. And since this is about mentorship, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, because I think this is at the heart of establishing a critical mass so that change becomes part of the system. We really, you know, as much as I like uh, Richard and admire Richard, we have to move away from the model where uh, a lot of the work is just handed by people that devote their lives, no matter how successful they are uh, to do that. And we have to develop a system where everybody participates and everybody contributes. So, uh, so what is the motivation? I, uh, I agree, you know, the statistics are poor. But I'm just going to mention briefly some of the statistics just to address the point that this is not only a problem uh, uh, of, uh, on the representation for min uh, of minorities, but it's, it's essentially it's a, national, a serious national problem. And I think in, in the hand that's particularly, if you get the stuff that, uh, that Armando wrote, you, you will see some really dramatic comparisons across constraints and things like that that are really indicative of this. So essentially, this is just a general idea about the number of BS degrees awarded by institution. So you can see this is what you would expect, expect in terms of the, of the numbers. There is a lot of them. Uh, there is a relatively higher degrees about Asians and underrepresented minorities are below, and so forth. So I think you are familiar with these statistics. And now I'm going to talk about the situation about master's degrees and see how it goes when you go to master's degrees. And then uh, there you start seeing this, this sort of creeping component there, which has to do essentially with uh, the fact that as soon as we move into the graduate programs, and here we're talking in average terms, and if you become more specific, the situation becomes uh, a lot worse, is that most of the, uh, of the uh, people participating in higher education in this country come from other countries. That has been, a, obviously, a great benefit to this country. But it essentially, it's, it's, it's a big problem when you have one of the best educational systems in, in the world with some of the best faculty, and our own students are not participating. And we can make all sorts of excuses. They're going to computer science. You're going to computer science. It's the same thing. They're going to this. You're going to that field. It's the same thing. Oh, they are getting higher paying jobs. Well, now we're hiring bachelors and degrees from foreign countries, too, because we don't have enough. So um, I think we're extraordinarily making excuses uh, rather than trying to look at ourselves and see what, why are we not attracting the students. I was looking at the University of Arizona. They have 350 majors. New Mexico State has 50. Why the discrepancy? University of Arizona has 50 underrepresented minorities. Here we have 450 math majors, and we don't have too many minorities as an undergraduate. So we are not doing something right here. And I think one has to look at that. You have to look at yourself. You have to look at your group and see what can we do to change this. 
or how maybe we should go and talk to Bill Bellis at the University of Arizona and ask him, what are you doing right? Oh, you know, so that I can actually implement it at my own institution. So this is the situation on MS degrees that you put for minorities. The number starts to slide down dramatically. And I'm going to go through this quickly because I don't want to depress you. You're going to have lunch soon. And then we have the national situation, so PhD degrees in the mathematical sciences. And then you see there, uh, essentially, that the situation is even worse. So the higher we move to the leadership uh, level, the worse we have the situation. And if you talk to any kind of industry now, most of them are hiring people with master's degrees and PhDs. So essentially, pretty soon, there's going to be almost no participation by American students in positions of leadership. right? And that includes your children. right? Because if you immigrate, your children come here, well, they fall into that pattern too. So that's something that we have to seriously think about that. And as I, as I said, I, I think one of the great strategic decisions of this country is to provide opportunities for, from people from everywhere. But I think one of the tries of this country is that we have developed this incredible educational enterprise. And, uh, and it's not being accessed by, our own, uh, by members of our own community at all. And that's, I think, that's sort of the, the bad situation. You can see the situation of PhDs. You put it by male, female. Uh, on the represented minorities, the numbers are pyrrhic. Uh, uh, last, uh, last year alone, there were eight PhDs Latinos out of over two, uh, out of about 1,000 PhDs in the mathematical sciences. Uh, uh, the year before, I think, there were 12. And before that was 15. So almost every number seems to be suffering. OK, so I'm going to skip that already. So the question is, uh, if mentorship is a, a key component, who are the best mentors? And I think, I think that there is continue uh, to be a promotion of, of the role model. And, and I, I say why the role model, because while it is true that it is really highly desirable to have a lot of underrepresented minorities in positions of leadership, mentorship, and so forth, the truth of the fact is that there are so few that if we continue to follow that as the model, right, we will never develop the critical mass that we need. So, who, so I'll just make a few, a, a little movie of who were my mentors. So this is Gilbert Walter, University of Milwaukee. Fred Brower, University of Wisconsin. Simon Levine, Princeton University. And I have a few ones that didn't want to give me their picture. So, <laughs> uh, Ken Cook, uh, which is uh, Pomona College. So, uh, and Herbert Headcott, which is the individual in this, uh, in, if you are coming this way on your right, that, that, so these are some of the people that have actually uh, helped me a lot. Now, was this enough? Yeah, it was enough from an academic point of view. It was enough to do something. But it was not enough for me to think about it myself. What am I going to do with my life? Which direction am I going to go? You know, and it, it, was, it was a great uh, mentorship in terms of personal life, academic life. They became my friends. But they didn't uh, provide me a vision and a direction of what I could do with what I have that I was happy with. So who did that? So this, my mentors at the distance. Uh, Richard Tapia has been very influential. You know, I never took a class with him. I never went to his institute. Uh, it was enough that he was there doing all these things. Uh, you know him. Uh, Bill Veles, University of Arizona, same thing. He was there. Uh, the one I don't have a picture, but, and he refuses to send me a picture, David Sanchez. Uh, is that his against pictures? And uh, anyway, and it was really interesting. The first time I ran into his book, oh, David Sanchez, a book in differential equations. I bought the book. Why? Because he was by David Sanchez. And I still have copies. When I run my summer institute, I buy enough copies so that everybody can actually uh, get autographed copies by, by David when he decides to come. Uh, and Joaquin Bustos, again, I. He was here. Uh, I knew him for some time. We were never close friends. Uh, I admire his work. We interacted a lot. We discussed a lot about these issues. But just being, just seeing, being aware of the things that he was doing, it was, it was sufficient to decide uh, what I was going to do. So since I'm a mathematician, I have to give you a model. So I'm going to write some equations <laughs> to describe what you have to do in order to do this model. So I'm going to talk about. Uh, a conversion infection model is, is more than a mentorship model, but I'm going to just give you some sort of brief idea of the power of collaboration, the power of doing things in group rather than individuals. So first, uh, some basics. Uh, we could have to, uh, used uh, this model to describe nuclear fusion, but since there are no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, we don't have to anymore. 